Hello everyone, my name is Frank Downs. I'm a senior cybersecurity manager at ISACA, and today we're going to go over how you can take some steps to better protect yourself from Spectre and Meltdown. Now, by now, many of you have heard about the Spectre and Meltdown security vulnerabilities that are pretty much inherent on all these processors that have been put out in the last at least 20 years. Well, while it is a little bit unnerving, there are a few steps that you can take in order to make yourself more protected and have a more robust defense than if you just simply let things go their natural course. By protecting yourself, you can ensure that there is a lower risk that you will be impacted negatively by what's actually taking place when these vulnerabilities are exploited. So what I'm going to show you is what you can do on a Windows system in order to identify if you actually have the vulnerability, which many of you will, it's nothing to be too concerned about, and what the first steps of mitigation are that you can take in order to protect yourself. Now, since everything is still relatively new, the tool that Microsoft has provided, they've indicated you should use, is a PowerShell script. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with PowerShell, PowerShell is a tool which is used by individuals, mainly computer IT professionals and network administrators. It's a scripting tool which helps perform many different tasks in a quick fashion. So I've got my PowerShell terminal open right here. And I'm going to take a little bit of time to show you the steps that you should go through in order to ensure that you have the right module downloaded and that you then execute it to identify if your computer is vulnerable. So let's go ahead and get started. In this instance, it's called Speculation Control, the module that you'll need. And in order to ensure that you have that module, you'll want to type the following. Now you'll notice that I got a warning in this instance for an untrusted repository and that's because it is a community repository. But in this instance, as you can see, Microsoft recommends right here that this is the actual module that you'll want to use using this command. So we're trusting the community in this instance. Then you're going to want to run this module to see if your system is actually vulnerable. Yikes, this system is vulnerable. As you can see here, that there, the mitigation capability is not present, it's false, and that pretty much this system that I'm on right now is completely vulnerable. Now, this shouldn't be too shocking for those of you who have read up on what actually the problem is in this instance. When you have hardware issues of this type, it's going to be pretty widespread, uh, the impact of this type of vulnerability. So what are we to do well it's going to be a while before there is a complete fix for everything because as I've mentioned earlier this is a hardware issue and if you'd like to know even more details about it and why it's such a big issue Ed Moyle here at ISACA has written an incredible piece that we will have a link to down below now what do we do now well a lot of updates are being rolled out and a lot of patches are being pushed one of which Microsoft has already pushed out and you can simply get by running a traditional update on your system. So that's the first place to start. Google has also announced that they're going to be pushing out an update for Chrome in the coming weeks that will help make this type of exploitation which applies to these vulnerabilities more difficult. So the key here is to ensure that your patch management processes are up to date. If you're a large organization, you probably know that you're not going to just want to run every patch and every update automatically because you don't know how that will impact business processes. However, 
if you're at home, it's probably safe to just update your current computer as these things come out. Thank you for your time, and have a safe day.